talked about that. And if anybody wants more information on that, I can share that with you if you'd ask me. Um, today I'm going to talk more about developing your spirit. I, how many of you remember years ago, uh, age, the mind is a terrible thing to waste? used to say that. Um, and that's true. But there's a truer truth that I believe is relevant. And your spirit is a far more significant thing to ignore. We ignore our spirit. We don't develop our spirit. We don't realize the resource that we have in our spirit. Or we've ignored our spirit. The mind, sure. I mean, we need to develop our minds. We spend most of our lives developing our minds. As a child, you're learning, you're growing, you're learning things. And eventually you go to school. You learn things in school. And then you move on to choosing a career. You have to learn things about your career. So your mind is always developing. But we, we basically ignore our spirits and don't really develop our spirits because we, really, we don't really know what they're for because nobody ever really teaches us about that. And so we focus on the soul. And so that's what we're trying to do with this series um, is talk about developing the spirit and give you some tools and some help in developing your spirit and to begin to recognize the difference between your soul and your spirit. And right now we're walking through an incredible time in history. I am, believe it or not, I'm incredibly hopeful. I think we're about to see the rebirth of our nation. I, I, I feel so strongly about that. God is doing amazing things, um, and I'm, I'm really excited about what's, what's happening. But during, not only is, I mean, the global pandemic, this COVID thing, and the election indecision, isn't 2020 a wonderful year? <laughs> oh man our souls are perplexed about this but I want to tell you something right now today get this your spirits are prepared to handle this they're prepared to handle this Job 32 oh first of all go to the first slide I just wanted to review this again. We showed this last week, and I use this from time to time, that we're three-part being. We're uh, spirit, soul, and body. We spend a lot of time on our souls. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time developing our, our spirit. And I just wanted to show this to you again, just so that you get it in your thinking, so that you understand how God made us, how he designed us. Uh, we'll be talking about that. Now go to Job uh, chapter 32, verse 8. But there is a spirit in people... The breath of Shaddai that gives them understanding. God gives us understanding into our spirit, through our spirit. That's where understanding comes from. Knowledge is in our brain, in our thinking, in our mind. But understanding comes in our spirit. And Psalm 142, 4 says, When my spirit grows faint within me, you know my path. In the way where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. God knows our path. And when our spirit seems to be getting overwhelmed, he is the resource that we need to tap into to be revived and to be restored. So I want you to think about this for a minute. Your spirit was designed and created by God. He knew all of your days before you were created. And guess what? He knew that you would be alive in 2020. And he knew that you would walk through all of this. So you know what he did? This is to encourage you. He preloaded you. He, he downloaded into you. He placed in you software that you should be able to access. There it was. It just came. Somebody's a little late. They just got theirs. <laughs> To be able to handle this. This isn't a surprise to him. He's prepared us for this. The, the difficulty is that because we haven't necessarily learned how to develop our spirits and learn how to tap into that resource, that we get overwhelmed in our soul, in our mind, our will, and emotions, and we don't respond with our spirit. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help you to understand how your spirit works, how you can develop your spirit, how to cause your spirit to be enlarged and strengthened. 
um, one, of, one of the things that we need to do is to acknowledge our spirits and recognize them. We actually say you need to legitimize your spirit. And the reason that I say that is because we've ignored our spirit so much that we've actually trained our spirit to be subservient to our soul. We've taught our spirit to be, stay in the shadows, to not talk a whole lot, to not give very much advice because we rarely ask for advice because we think about things. Um, so I want you to just imagine that you go to the store. I don't know how often you go to the store, but it's a store near you, and you walk in, and along comes one of your, one of your good friends, somebody you know well. And they look at you, but they don't even acknowledge you, and they just walk past. How does that make you feel? It kind of delegitimizes you, right? It kind of makes you feel like you're insignificant. You feel like, hmm. You might wonder, what did I do? Or maybe I'm not as important as I thought I am to them. And then the other example is that you go to a a big event, you go to a party, and you're just you're one of the people that comes, and there's this very important person there that you know a little bit. And so you come, and you sit down, and they look, and they're looking, and they see you. And they come right to you and say, hey, I was hoping you'd be here. I have something I want to talk to you about. <sighs> what does that do to you? Okay? So we need to understand that our spirits need to be nurtured. We've ignored them. We've been trained. Our parents were trained. Their parents were trained. We've all been trained. We train our kids to kind of ignore our spirits and to really focus on our souls. So what we have to do is we have to start to acknowledging our spirit. That's why very often if you look in this book and you read these these blessing prayers, the first thing that very many of them start with is a little blank. You can put your name in there. Child, I call your spirit to attention. In other words, we're acknowledging the spirit and we're calling it to the front. We're saying, spirit, I want to talk to you. I want to address you. Now, that might seem kind of weird, but it's not. I mean, once you, once you learn to develop your spirit and you learn to, to hear your spirit much better, you realize that there's a legitimacy to the fact that, that your spirit wants to be more engaged, but you have to engage your spirit because it's been ignored. It's been neglected. So think about this for a minute. Brand new mother, just had a baby, brings the baby home from the hospital. Now remember your first child, for those of you that are ladies. That baby makes one sound. What do you do? You're on high alert. They cry. Oh, my goodness, i got to fix whatever the problem is. It's like, got to get there right away. Gotta. And so for the first three days or so, maybe a week, you're really, really attentive. And after a while, you begin to discover what the different sounds mean, what the different cries are. And you're not jumping up right away, but you know that in some cases you have a little bit of time. Sometimes you just need to let the baby cry a little bit. Does anybody ever do that? Okay, so, so you learn to, to hear those different voices. And then... After a number of years, you have three children. The youngest one is five. Okay? And little Susie comes running into the room crying, Mommy! And you don't even have to have her tell you what the problem is. You know that she's coming to be a tattletale. You just know it. How do you know that? Because you've learned, you've, you've been trained to sense what's coming in the voice. Okay? You, you're, you're, and not only that, but each child has like 30 or 40 different voices. And so you get to recognize all of those different nuances in the way that they come and approach you and speak. You learn it, right? And so you're capable of learning that. Well, we have to learn to distinguish between four voices in our head. 
do you know what they are? <laughs> God, the adversary, our spirit, and our soul. Those four things. We need to learn, we need to, we need to train ourselves in recognizing the voice and knowing what to do with each one of them. And so that's part of what we're all about. Practice. It's practice. So for some people, and when you begin to talk, talk to them about developing the spirit, learning to hear what their spirit is, is speaking to them about. Some people, there are some people who are naturally just really good at picking things up in the spirit. And they make me mad. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They don't make me mad. It's like there's just some people that can do that fairly easily. But for most of us, it takes developing our spirits and learning to listen and being able to distinguish certain things. Um, and for some people, it's like an overwhelming Objective, But I want to encourage you again that God designed you with the spirit that is to be developed and engaged. And so that when we come into situations like we're in right now, that we have confidence, we don't have fear, we have confidence because we're sensing what the spirit's telling us and the spirit will give us the direction that we need to make the decisions that we need to make so that we can navigate through difficult times. And God wants us to be in a place where we can navigate those things. Again, 2020 was not a surprise to him, and it's not a surprise that you're here right in the middle of it. And he wants you to know and be encouraged that he wants to help you not only get through this, but through all the circumstances and situations in your life, because there are many things that come up in our lives that we need to make important decisions about, and a lot of times we're going back and forth trying to figure out what to do. And God, by his spirit, wants to direct us. He wants to lead us. If we make decisions out of our soul, then we can kind of mess up. But if we learn to listen to our spirit. So um, what we need to do is we need to Engage our spirit, and we, we need to call our spirits to attention. And I just read that from the book, and that's one of the things that you need to do. Just learn, learn to talk to your spirit. Acknowledge your spirit. Legitimize your spirit. And calling it to attention. And sometimes you might even have to do this, and this may be something that initially you need to practice, and eventually you get to to do it you need to tell your soul to step aside <laughs> you just you just need to say soul just sit down and relax <laughs> just kind of zip it i want to engage my spirit right now and i want to talk to my spirit and uh the the the, the reason that we do that and why i would encourage that is because the, the soul our mind, our will, and emotions carries a lot of baggage. You know, we may have been through a lot of ministry to deal with issues in our lives from the past and the things that we've talked about before, but sometimes you just need to say, soul, be quiet. I'm not listening to any of that right now. I don't want any of that affecting my ability to hear because your spirit can hear. Your spirit's connected to God's spirit, the Holy Spirit. So there's that connection that's possible. But sometimes you need to be intentional in saying, soul, be quiet. I'm engaging my spirit right now. And that's the way, one of the ways that we're going to be able to discern the four voices that we hear. And so with a little bit of training, with a little bit of effort, a little bit of work, you'll be able to distinguish between your soul and your spirit. Matter of fact, after not too much effort, you'll be able to distinguish pretty quickly the difference. You will, re you will recognize the soulish stuff that comes to your mind, and you will recognize the spirit things that come to your mind because they're usually dramatically different. <laughs> dramatically different. 
And so your spirit, this is just another point that I want to make. And this is all just kind of like information that you need to understand so that you're willing to make the approaches that you need to. Your spirit is actually made of, what, does anybody know? (laughs) What's your spirit made of? It's made of light. God's spirit is made of light, and when he created us in his image, our spirits are actually light. And so God created us, and he made us in his image, and created us light. So when you, it's like when you take two candles. We're going to do this at our hanging of the greenery service. We hand out candles, and we light one candle, and then we share that flame and pass it around the room until the whole room is lit with candles. Well, when you take one candle, light another candle... The first candle doesn't get dimmer. It just, it doubles the light. I mean, it, this, then this candle has its own light, and that's kind of the way our spirits are. They're light. And they're that, that essence. So we know that the, the, if our spirits are made of light, then God's fingerprint is, is on us and in us. And his power is working through us. Our spirits were designed to lead. And they will lead if you allow them to lead. Um, So how do we instruct our spirit? Our spirits don't understand their their latent capacities. They don't understand what they're actually capable of. It's like um, Johnny, five year old Johnny, runs around and he and his mom always read him books and he loves to have books read to him. So he goes to his mom a lot and asks her to read him books. And he doesn't know that there's an ability in him to read, that he actually has the capacity to learn to read. And until he does, he asks other people to read for him. And so, start to teach him letters, start to teach him words, start to recognize them on a page, learn to put them together, do a sentence at a time, and eventually he can read. The ability was always there, just wasn't developed. So you take a child in some culture, like an aboriginal child or somebody that where they don't teach reading, they don't have that in their culture, that same child, same intellectual capacities, has the capacity to learn to read, but is never taught, guess what? They never read. Okay? So it's the same with our spirit. As we develop, work on um, developing our spirit, we begin to um, see the capacities that our spirit has for understanding, for receiving knowledge and wisdom, receiving um, intuition is one of those things. Go, if you go back to the go back to our first side, the the picture, the spirit is conscience, communion, and intuition. Communion is fairly easy for our spirits to get because it's in those times of worship where we really sense the presence of the Lord. We really sense his presence. Where, where's that coming from? What, what is it in children that causes them in a time of worship to just kind of, they probably can't describe it, but to be in awe of God, it's because their spirits, which haven't really been drawn forth, but haven't really been stuffed either, that they respond probably more quickly. But we can sense the presence of God too. We sense him in worship. And so that's the communion part of it. But the intuition part is something that, frankly, women are usually a little better, a lot better than men at, of knowing things without having learned them. God wants to release understanding to us apart from things that we learn. We have the capacity to tap into the resources of heaven So that God can direct us. And that's happened multiple times through our lives. There have been times when I get a thought or an understanding of something in my time with the Lord. And he just like gives me something and I go, hmm. 
what do I do with that? And sometimes I don't know whether it's even biblical or not. And I say, okay, God, if this, is, if this is a truth, then show me in your word that it's true. And then he confirms it later on. Um, and so he can lead us that way. He can give us information ahead of time. I'll tell you, um, we, where were we? We were, who was talking? You. The other night, Friday night, yes, you, you, Gail Oakley. She was doing her teaching on Eden, and she said, how many people hear the Lord in the shower? My, because there's something about being in water, being, I don't know, she said something about vulnerability or something like that, where it's, you just hear things in the shower. My wife hears things in the shower all the time. And so, um, it doesn't always happen to me. Half the people on Friday, I put their hand up. We, I won't embarrass you. But the Lord spoke to me this morning when I was in the shower. I thought, oh. And so sometimes thoughts just, you know how thoughts just come? And they're good thoughts and they're God thoughts? Well, that's not, it's usually not you thinking it. It's the Spirit of God. And so when we acknowledge those things, say, thank you, Spirit. Thank you for being attentive to that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me that. And continue to speak to me and help me to develop my spirit. Um, And what we want to do, the place that we want to get to, is to where our spirits have dominion in our lives. We have to um, sometimes fight our souls to keep our spirit to, to be to tune in to key into our spirits um, and we there, there's a multitude of things that drag us away that drag our attention away from that sensitivity but there's a way that God wants us to walk so that we're attentive to him and I love the way that Bill Johnson described this kind of thing being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and being sensitive to God's spirit imagine a bird came and landed on your shoulder. And you know that if you make a sudden move, the bird's going to fly away. And so what you do is you just... very slowly, very carefully do what you need to do. Just constantly aware of that bird on your shoulder. There's a way for us to train ourselves so that we're tuned in to our spirits, but not like weirdly. It's our default position. And we want to get there to where our spirits are, are uh, where we're tuned in and listening to our spirits. So that when God wants to speak to us, we hear him immediately. When he wants to reveal something to us, we get it. He doesn't want us to feel like we're left alone. Last week, I, I, I mentioned that we are the temple of the Lord. We're his temple. He designed every one of us, created every one of us for his presence to dwell within us, which is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, but that's, that's his desire And he wants us to grow in our capacity to hear him and to receive from him the life-giving flow that he wants us to experience and enjoy. So I'm going to read just a couple paragraphs in a different uh, blessing. I'm really sorry. This is the picture of Travis when he was, like, little. And I was trying to scan it at break time to send it to the computer, but it wasn't working, so I'll try to get it for you next week. But that's a lot of curly hair there. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave, I'll leave this book up front here on the steps, so if you want to just come look at it. But this is one of the blessings that I want to read to you today. NBF family, listen with your spirit to the word of God. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. NBF family, your Father made you beautiful and beloved. I bless you with receiving the Father heart of God and his matchless love for you. His love revealed in you is a gold legitimate from which to live out your birthright confidently and purpose. I bless you with the belonging, inclusion, and worth that his love nurtures in you. I bless you with being convinced deep in your spirit that nothing in heaven, earth, or hell can separate you from your Father's love. I bless you with knowing that nothing in your past, present, or future can take his love from you. I bless you with being sure of his love in your fears and worries, in your problems and pain, in good times and bad. He promises that because of his love, his power, and his blessing upon you, he causes pain and negative things to be transformed into good. I bless you with deeply abiding in that truth. And be a family, listen with your spirit to God's word for you. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I bless you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So those kinds of prayers, those kinds of statements that we speak out loud, and if you get a book or if you look at some online and you begin to pray certain prayers or even scripture that you pray, you need to do it out loud. Now, it doesn't have to be full voice. It needs to be, it can be a whisper, but it needs to be audible. And as you speak these things to yourself, realize and be assured that your spirit is ingesting this and you're training your spirit to think in the way that it needs to think. We need to remember that we've, we've ignored our spirits. We've not engaged them much. And God wants us to really be able to release our spirits into the fullness of everything that he wants for us. So let's pray. Father, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and there is a way that you have created us to...